Cat, commonly known as Mairunji, is grown commercially in most parts of Uganda and wild cat is also still being harvested. One of the biggest cat growing areas in the country is Butambala, which supplies Kampala City and beyond. According to 80-year-old Sheikh Abdul Karim Wadda, the supreme cuddy of West Buganda, cart was first grown in Butambala in the late 1950s after the area hosted a visiting Muslim cleric from Somalia. He had come to teach Islam. The cleric always asked for cart before conducting the Islamic lessons. Sheikh Mohammed Semakula, a former mufti of Uganda who was the interpreter of the cleric, took on the task of availing cart to the teacher. We are going to the Xera, Nasalau, Yeruachi, Siso, Simba, Mairungigano. After availing the teacher with cart for some time, Sheikh Mohammed Semakula decided to plant it in Tamala to save himself the burden of looking for it from distant areas. This was the genesis of cart growing in the district. Thereafter, the plant spread to the community for commercial purposes. 75-year-old Mastula Namali has a cart farm seated on one and a half acres in Ntuntumo village, Butambala. The farm is currently managed by her children and grandchildren because she is weak due to old age. It has been her only source of livelihood for decades. From cart, she says her family was able to build a decent house and educate children. She is still able to facilitate the education of her grandchildren. When one asks for books, I'm able to provide. I am able to facilitate them and also cater to my needs. Namale says she almost shed tears when she got to know that Parliament had passed a bill to prohibit the use of cut. When this is finally signed into a law, will government provide us with basics like sugar? Hassan Lugendo, also known as Muchaina, is a cart dealer who, through profits from his business, has constructed a house. When NTV arrived at his cart business, he had made bundles of the cart for sale. He buys each bundle at 50,000 shillings and resells it at 75,000 shillings. Sometimes he divides each bundle into smaller bundles which he sells at 1,000 shillings each. In Kampala, such a small bundle can go for 2,000 shillings. Lugendo, who dropped out of school at an early age, has however raised money to pay school fees for his eight children in boarding schools. I pay fees for eight children. The list pays 500,000 shillings. This means I pay more than six million shillings in school fees every term. I will have no alternative source of income to cater for their learning should the ban take effect. The area has several private schools which, according to the owners, were built through proceeds from CART. They say burning CART will adversely affect learning in the area. The area is now so dry, we can hardly obtain any income from coffee to pay school fees for our children. Elders such as 94-year-old Elifaz Mukasa Sengendo do not believe that cut has adverse effects on the body. He says his conviction is best on the fact that he has spent many years growing the crop and seeing no side effects on people who use it. According to Muslim clergy in the area, the Holy Quran does not forbid people from using cut and the crop is not listed among banned intoxicants in the book. The Quran classifies it as a luxury for people to have fun in the same way they enjoy eating and drinking at a party. Other residents say in order for government to save them from sliding into poverty, the ban on cut through the bill should be stopped. If people have been living on this product for years, what alternative are you providing as government? Especially at such a time when you have seed, you're not going to provide seedlings anymore. For cut itself, in order for the minister to effect the law, the minister will have to come back to parliament with regulations and parliament will have to approve them. I think that's the only clause that saves our people as of now. Other people whose livelihood has depended on cut have mixed feelings on the bill. They conclude that the bill 
was tabled in parliament in bad faith. This is economic suppression with purely ill intentions. There are people, selfish capitalists, who want to exclude the ordinary people that have been earning out of this product. They want to be growing it themselves. That's why they've put in a clause of licensing. You cannot say you are prohibiting a product and at the end of it all you say the minister will license. Residents say the soil structure in the area changed and cannot sustain cash crops like coffee except cut. NTV could not independently verify their claim.